I'm Nick. This is my 2000 Volkswagen GTI, and today we're going to show you how to put a four-point roll cage in it. Over the years, this has transitioned from being my daily driver more towards being a dedicated track vehicle. I like to take this out on road courses and enjoy doing some high G-force cornering. So putting a four-point roll cage and a harness system in this will make it a lot more comfortable on the track. So I created this design. It came after referencing several rule books and it's more or less gonna be like a true six point cage would be, but without the front half. So we're gonna be using tube benders, tube notchers, and a TIG welder are gonna be our main tools that we're using for this project. These tube benders are prototype samples. We're trying to expand our line of tube benders and make sure we have the best product offering. So today you'll see some of the real world testing we do before these products make it into your hands. So the first thing to get going is we're gonna make our main hoop on one of these prototype benders. So this is a SolidWorks model of the main hoop and a print of that model that I made based off measurements I made in the car before we made a hoop. So the cool thing about making a model like this is you can pull where your bend start lines and end lines are and mark those out on the tube to use them with the tubing bender. And additionally, it gives you the degrees you need to bend the tube. The only thing you need to know to make this precise is the center line radius of your die and the spring back of the material you're using. So we're going to use an angle gauge with a piece of steel and some vice grip pliers to keep this bend in plane. That means it won't rotate so we won't have a distorted roll cage. This is a prototype electric hydraulic bender. So this bender takes 120 volt power from your wall and it runs it through this motor that spins the hydraulic pump and then it pumps your ram out to bend your tube. So we got our first bend here, we've shifted the tube down, aligned it with our second mark, we've got it all zeroed on the angle gauge and we're ready to make our second bend. And then we'll continue and we'll finish bending on the other side. We test fit the main hoop and it's looking good. So our next step is we need to fabricate the back stays to support the main hoop. The base plates the back stays will sit on have already been welded into the car. From that, we can work out about how long we need these bars to be by measuring from the base plate to the top of the main hoop. We'll leave them a bit long so we can trim to fit later. We also need to figure out the angle they will sit at left to right, as the bottom of them sits wider than the top. For us, it's 10 degrees. Using our length and angle measurements, we can move over to the tubing notcher and cut one end of each bar. So we got this tubing notcher set up just a little bit offset from the center line of the pipe, so we have a good made up with our main hoop. If we do it exactly at the center line, you'd end up with a thin section here that you would end up grinding off anyway before you welded it on. So doing it this way gives us a better welding joint. Our math checks out and the fitment is looking good. Now we move back into the car and figure out how long and what angle we need to cut the other end of our back stays to sit flush on the base plates. Cutting angles can be difficult sometimes because you hit limitations of the tool you're using. You may need to cut a 34 degree angle in the end of a tube like we are, but there's no way to secure it in the tool's jaws. Because of that, we opted to use the four inch cutoff wheel and then grind for final fit. Once everything is looking correct, we add some tack wells to connect the back stays to the top of the main hoop. So currently, we have the back stays tack welded in place. I ran a little bit of weld bead on them, and they're rock solid, so we're ready to drop the hoop down. Dropping the hoop down is nice because it'll allow us to get right around the top with our TIG torch without having to worry about hitting the roof of the car. So we're running the Eastwood Elite ACDC MB200i. This is one and three quarter inch 120 wall tubing. 
So 120 amps is great for a base pass with the 045 filler rod. And then I'm doing a second pass on this, cranking it up to about 130 to 135 amps using 1 16th inch filler rod. Once we've dropped it down and we've got the back stays fully welded, we'll bring it back up and then we'll be able to tack it down to the base plates. Our next step is gonna to be to fully weld in all four points of the cage so we can continue on to the diagonals. So this is our standard WP17F flex head TIG torch. This ships with all our TIG welders now. And we have a short back cap on here because you get into a lot of tight spots when you're welding a cage like this. Something else that's really helpful for visibility is a clear gas cup. We sell Furic cups and we sell our own Eastwood clear Pyrex lens glass kits. One thing that helps to keep in mind is as long as you keep a close tungsten offset, you can be pretty flexible with your torch angle off perpendicular from your weld joint. The main four point cage is welded in. So if a simple roll cage is your goal, you can stop here. We're going to add a racing seat, which will require a few additional bars to be added. We'll be adding a diagonal crossbar, a harness bar, and a final rear bar for lateral support. So this diagonal brace is required for all roll cages just to add additional strength and crush protection. We'll be finishing this out using the same techniques we've been using, grinding, notching, and welding. The last piece of this puzzle is figuring out the harness bar to mount the seat belt harnesses to. Simply put, you want it to be as close as possible to the rear of the seat and in a spot that puts a slight downward angle on the shoulder belts, 10 degrees being ideal for the ones we're running. Once we have everything mocked up correctly, we can go ahead and finish the welding with the same settings we've been using. And with that, our roll cage is finished. We popped the interior back in with some slight adjustments and then got it out for a track day. I'm super happy with how this turned out. The MP200 drive performed great and I got a bunch more experience using the machine. If you wanna tackle projects like this, you can learn everything you need to know about our welders as well as our other tools over at eastwood.com.